Well, hello again. It's been a little while, and uh, some have requested that I speak about Nick's wonderful Viveza 2 software. So I thought that's what we would do today. Go back to one of the Disney images. I know a number of you are kind of tired of my Disney images. I apologize, but it's been a, a great place to photograph. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, and I think it's a, an instructive image here. This is uh, the image as it's come in from Adobe Camera Raw. I've done very little to it. As a matter of fact, I've probably just done a black point adjustment. But we'll go ahead and go down to Nick's Viveza 2 and get started with my thoughts about how to, to use their wonderful product and, and their interface. So the main feature that um, Viveza brings to your processing is right here, the control point. And that allows you to uh, place a point where in the image where you would like to control uh, the tonality, the brightness, the contrast, what have you. So if you put a, a point here, you can now adjust those things, the brightness, contrast, saturation, structure, which is a new feature in Viveza 2. Shadow adjustments is also new. And then you can adjust the warmth, the red, green, blue, and the hue, the red, green, blue channels. But let's stop for a second and talk about the size of the circle. Before, I would have made this circle big enough to cover the blue and maybe drag this down so that it makes sure it covers the blue. And I would have played with this circle to get it to be the right size. I was out with Janice Went at Nick. She was kind enough to uh, allow me about four hours of excellent training. She's an expert. And uh, she helped me understand that it's a lot more powerful to do smaller circles and put a few of them. This helps Viveza to understand what you are selecting. So more points and smaller circles tends to work better. And even with that, you'll get some bleeding into other areas. There's a lot of blue being influenced in this silver column here. And even though we're going to select blue, a few blue points, and let's do that, you'll see that it'll it'll uh, run over into these other areas. Whoops, I'll make it a little bit bigger. And then I better, better rather, I'll be able to speak, put a third point up in here. Now, let's let's talk about another little feature. If you drag and draw a marquee, you will now select all three of these. If we then go over here to the group, we will group all three of those together. Now, when I make an adjustment, these three are tied together, and I will start to darken the sky just for... Uh, with those rather with those three points so they're working together now you probably noticed as i was speaking before that this uh, this also was darkened as well no problem let's go in and put some anchor points here i'll put an anchor point here and watch it'll brighten that back up i'll put another anchor point here and it starts to brighten that up again. So now what's happening is you're, you're continuing to tell Viveza where you want adjustments to take place. And by putting in these anchors here, it's canceling out the blue that these three that I was making the adjustments on were influencing into this here and saying, please don't touch that. Let's go over here for a second. And this, I'm over in the right-hand side. If I hit the mask, you'll start to see what's being built by Viveza as the mask and what's being um, adjusted or not adjusted. So let's go back here and, and keep working a little bit. We'll leave those anchors there so that's not influenced, but I do want to go into this area and see that, and it brightened that up a little bit, but I'd like to brighten it up just a touch more. And I'd like to add some warmth back in there because it was gold. It was reflecting from down below the, the sun, the yellow sun, reflecting back up into here. It was more of a gold. And so I'll also slide some contrast over. And I'll introduce you now to the structure slider. Because there's detail in these panels, the structure will do a nice job of bringing out a little bit more of that detail. Now let's take another control point, come over here, and what we're doing, as Janice says, is we're sculpting the light in the image. So I'm going to brighten these up so they set off really nicely against the blue and the other dark tonalities. We'll add a little contrast to these panels here, the little more silver panels. And, in fact, we'll use some structure to really make those pop. 
Now let's introduce yet another thought uh, in, in technique. If I hold down the Alt or Option key, I can click and drag and make that adjustment apply elsewhere. So what by clicking and dragging on this control point and dragging it down here, all the same adjustments I made on this panel of silver have now been applied to this panel. Okay, let's keep moving. Over here, the image was quite gold, actually. Uh, so I'm going to warm this up quite a bit. And I'm also going to add some contrast in that area. And yes, I'm going to go to my structure slider as well and add in a little bit of structure. And just to be safe, I'm going to click and drag. So Alt or Option, click and drag. And that added, made sure to cover that entire space. Again, smaller circles are better than bigger circles. Let's come down to this area here, this bright spot, which once again, I want to make warmer. So I'm going to bring the warmth slider over, warm that up a little bit, add a little bit of contrast, and I'm going to actually darken this just a skosh to really make that uh, have a gold feel. And let's not forget the structure slider. Okay, don't want this video to go on forever, so I'm just going to make a couple of quick um, control points here and go down to my structure slider and we're looking pretty good I'm actually going to go up to these uh, control points here I'm going to draw a marquee around them whoops I missed let's go like this there we go I'm going to tie those two together make them a group which is going to allow me to add a little bit of structure back into that top panel and add a little contrast into that top panel as well. And I think I'll go ahead and add a little bit of saturation to that top panel as well, make that stand out from the rest. Now, let's talk about a couple other things before we finish up here. Normally, by the way, I would take a little bit more time and be a little more precise and probably even add some more control points. I just don't want this to keep going on and on. So, as we have one of these control points selected, notice it says select selective rather over here on the right hand side if we want to make global adjustments just click anywhere in the image where there is not a control point so i just clicked right where my pointer was here now it says global this allows us to do exactly what it says make some global adjustments so let me darken this image up you know just a skosh and then come up here and add some contrast and then i can even add some structure globally and we've done a pretty nice job of sculpting the light and the tonalities in this image. One last thing. Nick has done a nice job of adding a levels and curves dialog box. So you can make adjustments just like you're in Photoshop and pull these over to brighten, right? And darken like you would in the levels dialog box and use the curve to make an S curve, put points on the curve, if you will, and uh, make an S curve if that's what you want to do. So they've given these tools as well. I'm going to reset that and not do anything with that. Okay. So lastly, you have options. You can, so there are certain times where you don't want to apply Viveza's um, effect, if you will, or into the entire image. In that case, you would hit the brush. This would dump it into Photoshop and apply a mask there and get you set up ready to paint the effect in where you wanted to. In this case, we want the effect to happen on the whole image. So I'll hit OK and we'll apply this uh, to this image. And sure enough, here it comes. Sometime today would be good. There we are. <laughs> so there we are. We at This time, because we've applied it, it just puts it in as a layer without a mask. Of course, we can add a mask down here, the vector mask, if that's what we'd like to do, or layer mask. And we, we, uh, we, you know, we can paint out some of that effect if we wanted to. So we still can add a mask. Um, and here we are before. Here we are after and all within Viveza. In fact, Janice in my training uh, helped me to understand that she really does most of her processing right within Viveza 2 now, finishes up and does very little in Photoshop anymore. Let me just cover one last thing here. I'm going to go ahead and collapse the layers or flatten the layers 
and just talk about one last thing that I tend to do to get the look that I like. Go into Unsharp Mask, but I use it as a uh, mid-tone contrast move, not as a sharpening move. But let's, let, let, here's, uh, sorry for my stumbling here, but uh, there we go. Here's before and after. Notice here we have a little bit of a problem. We're blowing out this area as evidenced by the histogram up here. Uh, we don't want to do that. So I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to create a duplicate layer. You can do that a number of different ways. I'm not going to cover that. Uh, for me, it's Command J on a Mac. And that's going to give me the ability to add a mask. I'll add a mask to that layer. Now I can go ahead and go in and go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask to get that mid-tone contrast I was after. Hit OK. And now click on that layer mask. Hit the letter B to paint with the brush. Paint with the color black over here. And now I'm going to just protect that area and, and mask out that 2050 adjustment right in this area. Now that makes sure makes sure rather that I'm not clipping on the right hand side and we've created a pretty nice looking image. So there's before and after with that mid-tone contrast move. I really love Viveza 2. I use it uh, daily in my workflow uh, to be candid. Uh, it's become a staple of my processing. I love its ability to be selective and craft and, and shape the light the way I want to. Uh, if you go to my blog to the About Me Discounts um, tab up at the top, you can receive the code there that will allow you to get a 15% discount not only on Viveza 2 but on any of their products or suites of products. Highly recommended. It's one of the, again, the cornerstones of what I use, and it should be one of the cornerstones of what you use to craft uh, your images as well. See you next time.